Hi there, it's Anthony from Evolution Series. It's been a little while since my last video, but I have a good excuse for that. Um, I've been working on quite a few new libraries, and one absolutely mammoth project was the update for World Percussion. That took just a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I'm very pleased to say that we're here now with it. And it really is something I'm truly proud of. I think this update brings it in line with all the other newer products that we have on display. I think the key thing to understand here is uh, what exactly have we changed? So I would like to kind of dive in a little bit, show you what we've changed, look at the new interface, and also explain a few other decision choices um, that we had made, which does change the workflow a little bit from the previous one. It's not an exact replica of the previous World Percussion, which means, it still means, you know, all the same drums and everything have been, you know, ported across. But there are a few changes, like how the MIDI engine works. There are a few differences, such as we had to um, stop using multi-instruments. So if you kind of remember, if you're a World Percussion 2.0 user, uh, you would understand that World Percussion was comprised of a number of individual inst contact instruments. So if you wanted a djembe, you'd load a single djembe instrument and then bang, here's your djembe. Uh, and then uh, what we ended up doing is we use contacts multi-instrument function to build combinations. So if you wanted like a, a African ensemble that comprised of four djembes and a bunch of duns and uh, a talking drum or something, then you would load all those different drums and then using contacts multi-script fun function, uh, we were able to create that create a little ensemble and have some mixing features that worked within the whole ensemble. Now, in theory, all of that worked actually, it, it did work, but there was always a few um, quirks along the way, sometimes graphics would disappear from users and it was become a little bit frustrating. Fortunately, it wasn't a, a huge amount of, uh, you know, uh, occurrences of that, but it did happen and it wasn't an ideal situation, but sometimes it, that was what we had to work with and it seemed the most practical uh, situation to go with um, using Contax Multiscript. Over the years, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate the multi-script functionality never really evolved uh, a great deal. So um, it was more contacts internal scripting feature because they're two different functions. I don't want to get too technical here, but the internal instrument scripts evolved a lot more and it was a lot more of a cleaner experience when programming and creating instruments. So one big decision we had to make was to go, well, I think we just need to create a single instrument experience. Now, so that in itself was good. The next question we had to ask ourselves, well, we couldn't exactly put the whole of world percussion in a single instrument because we would uh, move beyond how many uh, instruments that could actually be encompassed in one single instrument, if you get, get what I mean. So. Like if World Percussion, the full version comprised of five regions of the world, and then, you know, we couldn't put all the drums of all five regions into one single contact instrument, it would just be too much. So what we ended up deciding is to make World Percussion 3 a more modular experience. So instead of having like one almighty World Percussion, uh, now we've got a single World Percussion Africa, World Percussion Asia, Europe, Middle East, South America, as individual contact player instruments, which means you don't have to own the full version of contact, you can just get contact seven and then you'll be able to dive in and play with, uh, with the instrument pretty easily. So it's, it's quite handy in that way. So we've managed to fit the sounds of Africa and a single Africa instrument and then Asia and a single Asia instrument and so forth. So that is one of the big changes. Uh, number one, 
into one instrument per region of the world. And each instrument is a contact player library. So that's a big change. The, ad the additional thing that we ended up doing is on top of um, putting the original content in a beautiful new UI, we actually have some brand new content, which is pretty exciting, some new instruments to add. We've got a world percussion ensembles, which we recorded groups of musicians and a beautiful scoring stage. And, and in the same manner of how we did uh, each individual region, it's just applied to a more ensemble approach groups of musicians. So you're getting that natural flam that is it's really quite, you know, wide, beautiful, three-dimensional sound. It's very, very cool. So we've got a nice new ensembles instrument. Uh, we have a tuned, wood percussion tuned. So that's like vibraphones and glockenspiels and uh, uh, gypsy dulcimers and hand pans and all sorts of cool things. So that's very, very interesting and fun library. One little point I would like to make about that, because we were kind of piecing each, you know, kind of bringing together each product in their own individual region, we had, we decided to take some of the tuned instruments from Africa and the other one was Asia and put them into the tuned bundle. So at this stage, Africa and Asia had to, uh, they ended up losing those tuned instruments, but we ended up adding some other drums to, um, to both those two regions as compensation for the lack of losing those out. So in the end, if you want to have access to those uh, tuned instruments um, from Africa and Asia, you'll need to get world percussion tuned. But we'll, we'll make sure we look after our users anyway and uh, give some sort of upgrade discount if you wish to purchase the tuned bundle. Uh, in addition, uh, we've, you know, was, we've got Tyco, which has uh, finally been brought into the contact player land, which will be lovely. There's been a lot of mix enhancements with everything. Uh, so I've gone through and tweaked a few drum sounds just to add a, a little bit of extra sonic refinement, which um, I personally think has made quite a big difference. There are a few other smaller libraries in the World Percussion series. We've got one called Oddities, which was a pretty crazy library. We ended up with a friend. We had a job. We had to kind of make some percussion rhythms and sounds out of bathroom fixtures, like baths and sinks and all sorts of things. So at the time, we had uh, all these things like you know, all these fixtures come to the studio and I decided, well, look, this is an opportunity. How often are we going to get to sample a toilet or sample a sink? <laughs> so that's what we did. We sampled uh, all those very cool sounds and we made this wonderful library called Oddities. And honestly, it's so handy. I mean, you'll listen to it and you won't naturally think, oh, that's, I'm playing a toilet or something. It's actually, <laughs> it just sounds like really unique found sounds and other quirky things. So it's a, it's definitely a great little um, inspirational tool to add on top of other different types of drums. It's, it's a great building block for sure. And then we have two smaller little world percussion libraries. We have the uh, Anklang, Indo Indonesian Anklang, which are nice, these rattly little things and uh, like a full range from low to high, and we sampled a whole bunch of different techniques for those. That's a really inspiring little product. And then we've also got uh, the a new African Mimbera. So if you if you remember in the original African World Percussion, we had a Mimbera, and that's now been moved into the tuned percussion library. I have sampled a brand new Mimbera, a different one. Uh, and this is really, really lovely. It, it was quite like the one in the original World Percussion was a little bit cleaner with a hint of buzz, but more clean. But this one had a lot of buzz. It was, it was quite, quite wild. It had like three or four, um, uh, you know, like a little tin 
tin caps. Sorry, I was thinking uh, <laughs> three or four tin caps on the actual body. And uh, every time you played one of the uh, the notes, the metal rods, the caps would go wild, and it would uh, it would just sound absolutely fantastic. It was just so raw and crazy. I thought, well, this is what we needed to sample this. It was just so different. Um, so we ended up sampling this African Mimbera, and you know, I also muted those uh, caps just to get a clean sound additionally, but it was quite detailed. It really is a beautiful, inspiring instrument. So it's a different Mimbera to the other one. So we've got that as a standalone instrument. So in essence, those are the key changes. Um, I did mention about the whole multi-instrument um, thing. We've removed that now. So in the end, a lot of the so the world inspire sets that you would have had from world percussion 2.0 or quick kit combinations had to be removed now bear in mind we've created new combinations within these new instruments they had to be kind of tailored a bit more to the new setup but there are combinations but they're not the original combinations meaning if you are uh, have got compositions or you've had sessions that you, you've used the old original world percussion, this instrument really is not perfectly cross compatible in that regards. Um, so I would say best thing is treat this update as a new instrument. If you have older sessions that you wish to reload, I would highly recommend just using the original world percussion 2 version 2 um, just to make sure everything is perfectly as it was when you have written your piece of music. Um, so yeah, that in essence, those are the key changes. There's a few layout changes, but in general, it's like 90% close as far as things. That's why I think best to treat these as brand new instruments. Now, I apologize, I have been talking for a bit, but there's a lot to kind of go over in this update. I should mention now that if you don't like talking, you just want to hear those sounds, go ahead and use the chapter markers in this video, YouTube video, to skip ahead to the different um, parts that interest you. Now, this is going to be a very long video because I want to look at every single region of the world, play all the sounds, and I, I will aim not to speak so much when I'm playing the sounds. I'll get all the speaking stuff as much out of the way during this part, and then later on we can just go through, listen to the sounds quite peacefully, and I might just mention the old thing as I'm going through if I see there's something relevant. So let's kind of jump now and look at the new interface, and I will explain exactly how it's set up. Once we've looked at the general overview of the interface, we'll dive straight into the sounds, okay? <laughs> let's go in. So here, let's uh, go and load up an empty session just to keep it all clean. For those of you who are familiar with some of our other product lines, we have our virtual scoring stage here. At the moment, it is empty because we have an empty instrument. So simply, we've put, we've got our, down here, artificial reverb, if you wish to add a little bit of that to the sound. Room noise, if you want to add a bit of room noise, uh, like continuous hiss underneath it all at the moment, it's just turned off. Boost, it just adds a bit of a high and low EQ boost to the overall mix of everything that you hear. And power just adds a little bit of compression overall. So if you want it more transparent, then you can probably not even bother using that. But if you want to kind of just give it a little bit of extra compression overall, you can have a play and see if that adds something desirable to the overall sound for you. Moving, moving along to advanced, we have our velocity curve. Uh, and dynamics, if you want to have a wider dynamic range on how you play the instrument, you can play around with that. If you want it to be a little bit less sensitive and just a bit more kind of linear in a way, then you can reduce that. I like to have it reasonably high because I like to have a bit more of a, a, a high, you know, higher dynamic range. Then you've got round robin. You can change that if you want to reduce the amount of memory overhead. You can bring that down to half or even just one round robin. But look, we are dealing with percussion. So I would say go full because, you know, more round robin, the more realistic, the better it is. 
quite often for a lot of these instruments, we're dealing with um, around 10 round robin, which is quite a lot, and multiple velocities, which is uh, quite highly detailed. I, you know, we when we recorded this, we went, <laughs> you know, it was go all or go home type sort of thing. Um, so we ended up really getting a lot of round robin. So this is that, and then you've got attack and release if you wish to play around with that a wee bit, and a voice limiter if you wish to kind of um, try and reduce the amount of overall voices. But I would say keep that on max if you can. It's uh, It always does sound a little bit better. So we're moving along here. We have the builder page. And here, now this is where we can start building up ensembles. But let's say you just want to do something really simple. You want to load one drum. Okay, so you can just go here. You've got an orb. You can have up to five different orbs. Each orb can have its own combination of drums. So here on orb one, let's say we'll load a, a dun. There we are. So double click. There's our little dun. Go click. There it is. And here we are. So there is our little dun. Okay, and if we go to the home page, you'll notice Orb 1 is there. So if you click on that, you can see that the dawn's loaded. Now, the interesting thing is here, if let's say you've loaded a whole bunch of drums and you decide, oh, I don't want to hear the dawn, you can click on that to simply mute it. Okay. Another thing too, if you prefer the more traditional way of mixing and you don't like working with orbs, you can actually just go traditional mixer, and here we are, you can play with your, um, you know, all the different mics here. I personally like working with the VR stage, it's just a bit more, for me it's a little bit more uh, kind of intuitive and less fluffing around with faders. So I'm gonna, just for the sake of my own enjoyment, I will stick to the, uh, the orb kind of, uh, the VR stage. Now just to kind of keep things a bit clean. So obviously you can have multiple, uh, load a whole bunch of drums per orb, but let's say we load something else. Let's just say we load another Dawn into orb two. We go here, you can see there's an orb panned out to the right. Obviously you can move these orbs around to wherever you want. Um, currently that here has been placed to a default C3. Now, you may want to have that, that's kind of cool. If you press that, you'll hear, you can hear both Dawn's playing at the same time, but sometimes you'd probably want it to be separate. So if you click on articulation mapping, you can drag that along, and then you can have your two Dawn's playing. So as you can see here, with each individual Instrument loaded, you've got their own unique set of articulation controls and articulation mapping. So you can control each drum's individual volume, pan, pitch, and delay, which just can add a small delay, but look, in the end, this is more of a bonus feature. I personally don't use it that often, but for some people it might be handy. And then here you've got uh, chromatic or white keys, the style of mapping. So if we actually choose chromatic, so watch what the keys do there then it uses all the, all the keys. Um, sometimes not everybody likes using it in, you know, chromatically. Uh, sometimes playing in white, white keys are a bit easier. Uh, so it's up to you how you like to set things up. So you can definitely do that. Starting note, obviously, I just showed you, you can change where you want the, uh, each instrument to start from on the keyboard. Now let's say in a situation we only want that one, but we want those two, you can actually hide the, you know, the last two there and, and they're gone now. But in the end, I think in this case, we'll keep everything. So it just depends on how you want to set things up. Because some of the like djembes, they're quite, they have quite a lot of hits. And in, in a few of the combinations, we decided to um, reduce the amount of hits made available. Otherwise it would just, you, you wouldn't be able to have, uh, so many drums available it would just take up everything on the keyboard. Uh, so yeah, we had to kind of limit the range a little bit. Which, so this is this was handy in that sort of situation. So yeah, so this is, uh, so the builder, you can have up to 
five different orbs and load multiple instruments. You can assign key switches if you want. You can assign velocity here. So if you wish certain drums to only happen at a certain velocity, then that's another possibility. Um, in the end, for me, this is something I probably don't use that much, but in certain specific use case scenarios, it might actually be quite handy. Um, so yeah, so I guess in a way, you've got some different features here. So if you want to reset velocities or key switches and so forth, you can do use these here. And also these settings here will um, relate to how you set up the key switches, whether you want to stack them or have whatever this one is and have them starting from a certain point moving upwards. You can use these features here too. So let's just keep things simple and I'm going to remove this one here. So we've got Dun here loaded. Now if we go to our little groove menu, so this is a brand new thing. This has been a feature that a lot of users have wanted for a long time. Currently in World Percussion 2 you had to um, yeah, you'd have your grooves assigned to keys, but the only way to get that groove and place it in your DAO would be going to a folder and you find a menu on your desktop or wherever you placed it and then drag that groove and put it in your DAO and then you can edit that way. Now we can do it all from in the interface, which is nice and neat and tidy. Currently, as you can see, there are no grooves loaded. So let's just... Um, look at the, how this is set up. So you can actually sample a, a preview, a groove. Right, so um, you can preview them that way. Obviously this needs to be turned on to be able to preview it. Then you, then you click. Now as you can see, I'll just turn this off here. As you can see, this little icon appears here. That means once it's selected, you can drag the groove. So you don't actually need to assign any grooves to keys. You can just play them from here and go, oh, I like, say, I like groove four. Okay, I'll just turn that off. And then you can then go drag it into your DAO and then off you go. But if you prefer just kind of playing the grooves within contact, that can be done too. So let's just set up some grooves here. So let's go Let's just add these. So I'm just going to go crazy and just go click, click, click. Okay. And then I'm going to go to techniques, add all those. As you can see, they start from down here and they're all piled on top of each other, which is not exactly ideal. Uh, I would like those grooves to start from C1. So let's go here, C1, click. And we go to this lovely little icon up the top, click, and then all the grooves go up there chromatically. So I can play now. Yeah, so you can play all your grooves pretty simply, which is great. Um, if you then decide, uh, you can, if you play, this one, and I really like that groove. I want to edit that in my DAO. You could see that highlighting here. You just click on it, make sure it's selected, and then click on this lovely little icon and drag that to your DAO, and then magically you've got your groove. Now, another little thing we've added here, as you can see down below, you've got tightness, swing, velocity, and tempo. This is these only work when the grooves are playing back within contact. Okay, so let's say you speed up a tempo times two. That's a two times speed, but this is the original speed. Okay, we speed it up. Now, Okay, that's cool. If you like that and then drag that into your DAO, it won't actually import as a two times. It will only play back in your DAO at the, the normal original rate. This is just a limit in contact. Um, there's Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about that. But this is more for like a live performance aspect um, because obviously in a DAO, you have a lot more flexibility on how you can manipulate your MIDI data and create and and build what exactly what you like. So you can, in effect, 
do all this stuff very easily in your DAO anyway. So um, this is just more to help with the live aspect of playing back the grooves within contact. Here we've got tightness and swing. Tightness by, at the moment it's on max, which is playing the original MIDI grooves uh, uh, setup. If we bring that down, it will make the groove a little bit lazier. I would err on the side of caution. If you go too much, the grooves will end up sounding a little bit too um, off, I feel. And the same with swing. If you just want to add a little bit of a swing, it's not going to make it into a full swing version, if you get what I mean. It would just add a little bit of extra kind of um, a slightly different vibe to the groove. I would say if you're going to do anything, use small doses, like very tiny doses, because in the end, if you go too hard, it's going to sound a little bit odd. Um, so yeah, so look, those are the key features. In a nutshell, this is how World Percussion is set up. It's pretty simple. Um, you can skip between pages here. You've got up to three pages worth of um, slots for MIDI grooves to load. And other than that, that's World Percussion in a nutshell. We've really tried to keep it as simple as possible. In addition, we have snapshots, which you'll use to be able to load all the different instruments. So you've got combinations. So if I load up a combination here, you can see here we've got all five orbs loaded in this particular combination. And if we go to the Builder page, you can see how we've got all these different instruments set up here. You've got djembes and duns and sangbangs and kinkinis, chols. There's a lot of, lot of goodies there. And with all of this, you can, you know, they're all assigned to each orb and you can move each orb individually. So whatever's assigned to orb one, which in this case is djembe one, two, and three, if you want that a bit to the left, which it is, then you can. If you want it more to the left or more further back in the room or closer, you can have a lot of fun with that and just create your own unique mix flavor. One thing I'm, I am really loving is um, hearing things really close in the mix, getting a way, way more intimate sound than a big roomy sound. So it just depends on what you're after. So how about let's just go ahead, have a listen to all the sounds. So let's start off with the lovely world of World Percussion Africa and have a bit of a listen. Firstly, let's go through and look at all the individual sounds and we'll end up with the combinations. Here is the banana bell. So we've got a, com a few you know, MIDI grooves and we've got some techniques. Techniques are kind of more one-shot things like little flams or dillings and whatnot. So there's a good variety there of sounds. It's quite a beautiful transparent sound. I'll just show you here. If we move this really close, you can kind of hear. One thing we did make sure is when we recorded this library is to really have it as, from a mix wise, as flexible as we can. Because sometimes when you record in a bigger room, big room, even the close mics can sound quite roomy. And if you remove all your room mics, the close mics still don't sound very close. So we, we did a lot of tricks in how we recorded things and the way we set everything up to be able to give you the most flexibility in that sound. So, cause I know there are many situations where you don't always necessarily want a big epic sound. You kind of want a more intimate, intimate uh, sound, which I think is pretty important. So let's, uh, let's keep going. I'll, tr I'll try not to speak as much now. I'll just keep flicking ahead. So actually these, we did add some new drums here just to show you quickly, we've got these were not included in World Percussion 2. Bung Bung 1, 2, Chol, and Tugani. These are four new drums that we've added. This is part of uh, a Saba drum set. So they're a bit more of a higher sort of drum sound. They're very, very cool. 
Uh, it just adds another nice traditional element to um, Africa. So let's just have a listen. And as you can see, the MIDI grooves are just referring to the individual hits. So the grooves really are just there as a bit of inspiration, but I encourage you to create your own rhythms and use the individual hits because the grooves are just there as a kind of a beginning point. Bung bung two. And as they're MIDI grooves, we can make them go faster. So let's bring them up to 130. Okay, Chol, which is one of the new ones. And diving back into the original djembe's. Jimbe two. There's really a lot of cool techniques in these djembe's, so there's a lot there to be able to uh, craft your own rhythms and ideas and have a lot of fun. Djembe 3.
djembe four. Jimbe five. Gym Bay six. Dun Dun One Dun Dun Two Ken Kenny one. Ken Kenny two. Sang bang one. Sang bang two. Shakir, which is a nice little shaker. The talking drum, this was fun. It's a, it's a great wee instrument, this one. It's got all these ropes down the side and as you squeeze the rope in, it increases the tension on the skin, so the pitch of the drum changes as you're squeezing the drum, hence the, the word talking drum for its name.
Preshtun, which is, uh, and it, it was, it's a dun, like an African dun, but it was made out of a big barrel. Um, so Ian, a wonderful, talented percussionist, made this one, and it was it's just got a much deeper sort of tone than a traditional dun. Tugani, the other part of the subset. As you can hear, there is a little bit of reverb on here. So if I turn this off, have a listen. So, I mean, obviously you can't really escape 100% no reverb, but it's a pretty dry sound, which is very, very handy. So let's have a look. So now we've reached the end of our solo drums. Let's have a look at some combinations. So in some ways, these would be the equivalent of the World Inspire sets that we had in World Percussion 2.0, but obviously these have changed, different combinations, different grooves, um, and a new kind of in a new interface. So let's have a look here. We've got all percussion, a whole bunch of different like djembes, dun, sang, pang, king, kenny, some of the saba, the trash dun, and it's pretty much an everything patch really. So if we kind of just have a bit of a listen. So if you play a little bit softer, you'll get um, the rhythm being played back using some softer dynamics. So with this in mind, one thing that's kind of handy, uh, actually it's in here. You can see here how this velocity knob is moving as I'm playing softer and then goes up when I play louder. You can actually go control click and then learn MIDI CC and then assign that to say a mod wheel or a, any kind of controller that you like and then hold then be able to play a groove and then use your controller to adjust the, the velocity level if that's how you like to work it too. So this is uh, this is quite a nice one this all kind of uh, all the drums playing together, it's definitely quite inspiring. So those are some grooves, and then obviously spread out across the keyboard, you've got individual hits. So there's a lot, there's a lot of hits there. Um, Obviously it's taking up a lot of the keyboard, uh, so you may have to use your octave switch jump to move up to the different section you want to play, uh, unless you have some crazy long uh, keyboard that can handle it all. But generally, uh, you know, I would use the octave switch to kind of move to the section. I'll play in that wee bit and then, and then kind of program my drums that way. So let's have another look at another little combination. 
Here it's just a uh, the Bung Bung, Chol and Tugani set, so the Saba, all the Saba playing together. individual hits are all laid out. So very handy, these little uh, combinations. Here is uh, all six djembes loaded. got all the individual hits laid out. So once again that's pretty handy if you just want to have all djembes and you can just kind of hammer away on the keyboard. And all the duns. As you could hear there, you can really sculpt the sound a lot more by changing where these orbs are placed on the stage. So you've got a lot, all the individual sounds there. And that was all. So in a nutshell, this is our lovely little Africa. I think it's it's a neat and tidy instrument. You can There's just a lot of great content there if you just need to be transported away to Africa. I think this is definitely a very handy tool to have. Okay, let's dive into our next region of the world. So let's have a look at World Percussion Asia. So like Africa, we'll dive straight on in into some solo instruments. Some have no grooves and some do. In this case, uh, the gong instruments do not. So let's check them out. Now we're diving into the groove or instruments with grooves, so back. Dan Moy, which is one of our new ones. Uh, so it's a like a jaw harp, and uh, it's, it's, it's got a really interesting sound. I really do love it. So it's 
So we sampled a lot of different techniques with this one. Bit of fun. The uh, doll drum. Doll two. Doll three. Guttum, which is a this clay pot percussive instrument. It's a very cool instrument. Group stick hits. Jungle. Kindang. Gary. The Korean Mudang symbol. Lion symbol. So we recorded some new drums also for Asia. We've got three solo lion drums and lion symbol, which is really, really nice. It covers some really interesting sounds. It's part of the traditional vibe of China, which is terrific.
to have sampled some nice looped rolls there. And now we're entering into the first line drum we have here, which is the large one. So they're really, really nice drums. I do love the line drums. And a medium sized line drum. You can hear all those little jangly sounds. Actually, those were in the drum itself. It was quite cool. It's just part of its sound. <laughs> it was it's kind of magical, actually. Uh, so that's the uh, the medium line drum. So some hits. And we sampled some flams too, just for interest. the littlest line drum. Rabana. Rabana two. Rabana three. Rabana four. Rabana five. Rabana six. Tubla Bound, which is the, the bass um, drum of the tubla. Tabla down, which is the higher pitched drum, as because the tabla consists of two drums. So this is the higher one. We really quite deeply sampled the tubler, lots of different sounds there. And some little wood blocks.
And let's look at some combinations now. So with this one, we have a whole variety of different drums. We've got Dole and Bach, some different Dole, cymbals and gongs. Lots of good little instruments there. And lots of Rabanas too. different drums laid out across the keyboard. So there's a great variety there. These combinations are really handy if you're in a rush and you just want to get a whole bunch of interesting sounds right there at your fingertips, then you can just go straight in and be really creative. Okay, we'll have a listen to the line drum and cymbal set. So lots of little inspiring groove starter points, but once again, I would really insist, just get in there and make your own grooves. It's way much more fun. So you can obviously, you can play all the drums out. So you've heard all the previous, them individually anyway, so we don't need to go into too much detail here. Um, we have a tubler set, you can kind of hear the, the low and the high tubler playing together. Fun things there. We have Tabla, Guttam, and Kendang. nice just hearing how different combinations of drums work together as a team. It's pretty inspiring. And that is our little World Percussion Asia. Let's have a look at the next region. Here we have World Percussion Europe. Let's have a look at this one. So like Asia, we, there are a few instruments that have no grooves and there'll be a bunch that, that do. So let's just start from the, the no grooves and keep working our way down. So 
So hand symbols. A kick, kick drum. It really is a great kick, this one. It's got an almighty low end. Some orchestral gong. Orchestral gong too. And some scary. Some scary sounds there. Suspended cymbal. Thunder tube, this is a new one. This is a quirky little instrument. It's like this, this kind of cylinder thing with a metal rod and you kind of whack the rod and it creates this sort of thundery sort of sound. It's quite fun. Timpani. So it's handy to be able to move these around in the room. So this is timpani being hit with a stick. As you can see here, we've um, there's a duplicate of all the notes, so you can play two-handed. So if you want to do rolls and so forth, you can instantly do that. Okay, now we're heading into our little territory of groove-based solo instruments. Let's look at the bod drum. Group hand claps.
So a Jews harp here. This is a, a cool new instrument, which is quite lovely. And we have four different military snares, so I'll just quickly go through so you can hear the sonic differences. Snare two. Snare three. Snare four. And into the octoban. And the big orchestral bass drum. definitely got some girth behind that low end there. So now into more snare drums, these are more orchestral snares. Another snare. Snare three. And snare four. into Roto Tom territory. So there's a, a bunch of these, so I'll just quickly skip through each one just so you can hear how they sound. They're quite simple.
Rototom 3. Rototom 4. And now we're heading into uh, Tom territory. Really has some nice bottom end there. Tom four. So we've got eight different toms there. It's great because they're all different and then you can stack them all together and create some interesting combinations with all those toms. And this here is all the solo instruments. So let's have a little look at the combinations. Here we've got um, a no groove combination, which is just um, the gongs and cymbals all together, which is pretty handy. So if you're in a rush and you want to just load up all the symbols, then it's just right there in front of you. So here we go into the uh, drum ensemble. So we've got a grand ensemble here, which uh, we look at. We've got orchestral bass drums. It's pretty much all the main instruments here playing together. We've got snares and roto toms and orchestral bass drums and bod drums and gongs and all sorts of things.
So as always, great stuff there to work with. Really easy to make something unique and big and just load up a single instrument and you're off, to, off and ready to go. Here we've got uh, kick, military snares and orchestral snares here. So there's a lot there to play with. And here we have orchestral bass drum, bodran, hand claps, and uh, juice harp. I really love that combination. It's just fun with the uh, the hand claps and the juice harp going there. It's it's just really really unique. And let's see. Oh, and we have one more little combination. So all the toms, pretty much toms, roto toms, octoban. And then you've got all the individual hits. So easy access to go and create your big epic Tom symphony there. <laughs> okay, that is Europe in a nutshell. So let's jump on to the next region of the world. Here we've got uh, World Percussion Middle East. Let's have a wee dive in. Solo drums here. So now don't be fooled about the fact that there's not as many drums as the other regions. Bear in mind, the Durham Booker, there are such detailed drums. They had so many techniques. As you could see, like in, in Europe, there were a lot of drums, but there were a lot of drums, you know, that only had a few different types of hit types because they're just a limited, more limited type of instrument. But whereas like the bass Durham Bookers or the Durham Bookers in general, they, they could do so many different types of hits. It was quite extensive. So even though it's uh, less drums, each drum have a lot more in articulations made available. It's a beautiful instrument. So let's have a quick little look and check some of these things out. So we've got bass Durham Booker loaded up here.
So we'll have a quick play of some of the individual hits. And bear in mind, they've all got like 10 round robin, these things. So there's a there's quite a lot of detail and you can create some fantastic performances here. So 10 round robin and multiple velocities. So I, there's really a lot to work with. Let's just keep diving forward um, with Durham Booker 1. So that's kind of a smaller size Durham Booker, but more of a standard size, I would say. So very, very useful. Uh, we'll move on to Durham Booker 2. I just remember when we recorded these instruments, we spent hours recording the Durham Bookers. It was like the uh, some of the other instruments we recorded through reasonably efficiently, but the Durham Bookers were so detailed. We got a little bit OCD during the day, and it was uh, we really wanted to capture as much flexibility as possible. I'm really, really happy with how these instruments turned out. The Duff. Finger bells. Mazha. Rick. Tubble, one.
Table two. And the two pun. Okay, let's uh, check out some combinations. And here we just have all the Durham Bookers playing. And another combination, Duff, Mazha, Rick and Fingerbells. Now just a little tubble and two pan combo.
And there we have it, the lovely sounds of the Middle East. So let's go check out the next region. So welcome to South America. Let's have a little look. We'll start off with the agogo -go bells. Bongo set one. So we actually have, for South America, we decided to record a different set of bongos, one that's sort of tuned a bit lower as a different option. So this is the original bongo set. Bongo set two, the new one. So with this set we ended up recording um, a few extra techniques, some live rolls and other bits and pieces which are fun to use. And the Brazilian shaker. Cajon. Uh, the clave, sit. So we have four different sized conga drums, which ultimately are to be part of a overall set. We sampled these in quite detail, so there's a lot of different interesting techniques. different size conga, the quinto.
re quinto even higher. and the almighty super tumba, which is the biggest one of them all. And ultimately, you can combine all four of these drums and have them out across the keyboard and play a nice conga set. The cowbell. So this is a new one. Uh, we sampled a whole bunch of different types of cowbells. It's, uh, you know, who, you know, as they say, you need more cowbell, really. Sorry, dad joke. So there's different pitch cowbells there, so you can really have a bit of fun with that. Hawaiian shaker. Pandero. Repanique. So do one. It's definitely a mighty suru. And there's suru two. Suru three. And sort of four, which is a new one. Uh, so we decided to sample a few extra techniques. So this is quite a mellow sudo. So we had some rolls and some flammy things and whatnot. There, it's definitely handy. Another handy drum. It's always good to have a variety. Tambourine.
timber. And due to popular demand, we decided to record a timbale set and add this to South America. It seemed like an obvious choice. So we recorded some live flams and other bits, which are really, really handy. And some rolls too. And the little triangle. Triangle two. And those are all the solo drums. Let's dive in and have a look at the combinations. This one comprises of both hand and stick drums. It's quite a big one. And as usual, all the individual drums hits are all laid out across the keyboard. And you can go ahead and make your own grooves from that. This one is just hand techniques, or hand drums I should say, only. And here we have stick drums, or drums that have been played using a stick. And here we just have the conga and bongo set. So 
So it's quite handy, as you can see how you can change the mix pretty easily and just come up with a, a whole new sound. And just some metal and wood sort of sounds playing. And that is South America. So I hope you've enjoyed those sounds. Let's move on to the next one. Here we have World Percussion Taiko. Let's have a look at some of these solo drums. Here we've got uh, a particular instrument, vocal shout ensemble, which uh, has no grooves. It's pretty basic, but it's handy just to add in there within any of your compositional work. And here we are, diving into the grooves. So that's an ensemble there. And now we have, well, we do have two solo um, ones of that particular ensemble. So if you want to just have only one drum playing, um, you've got two options for that. Solo two, option two. Cane bell. Okay, Daiko Ensemble. I love hearing these drums up close. It's, uh, it's definitely very, very <laughs> handy when working with them. And we have a Okidaiko solo one. Solo two. Jimmy Daiko.
that's an ensemble. And we have a Shimmy Daiko solo one. Solo two. And the Almighty Wine Barrel Ensemble. These are cool, they're pretty big. close mics. And we have those two solo options for that. And those are the solo instruments. Let's have a look at the combinations. So the first combination is uh, using all the solo and the ensemble drums together. So if you want to go close and crazy, we can bring these up and you can kind of hear what they are doing when you have it a bit more intimate and we can maybe widen these out a bit more for fun. pretty cool. So that is, and then obviously you've got all your, you've got all your individual hits. Next one here is just the ensemble, drums by themselves. Lastly, or a combination of all the solo taiko drums. So that is our Taiko library. 
Um, one of the things that we did with Tyco, probably more than the others, is ended up doing a lot more mixed tweaking to this one. I, uh, I felt it could definitely have done with a little bit more uh, improvement on the mix front, and I'm really, really happy with where it's sitting now. It just feels ultra full and transparent. It's just a, a fabulous product, this one. Uh, the grooves, pretty much all the grooves from the original Tyco in here, except there's been a few tweaks and changes. Um, it's, this one is probably the closest as far as feature-wise to the original library, um, except some of the grooves are a little bit different. It's not a, once again, it's not a perfect transition from the previous Tygo to this one. I, I would still recommend using this as, or treating it as a new product, but it pretty much gives you, uh, you know, most of the grooves that you would have experienced from the original one. But obviously this, I feel this version is way better than the older one because it's got a much more uh, user-friendly experience and uh, brings it into the modern age. So that's our Tyco. So let's go ahead and look at our next bunch of instruments. So these ones are our new instruments, the ones that haven't been released yet, or, you know, as far as they weren't released in the past. These are brand new additions to the world percussion ecosystem. So let's look at World Percussion Oddities. This is quite a, uh, well, as the name says, it's quite an odd instrument. It's a little bit of backstory. Ages ago, um, a friend of mine, Angela Greamer, and I, we were working on a unique project where we had to take a whole bunch of uh, bathroom fixtures, you know, toilets, bathtubs, sinks, other wee clangy things, all sorts of goodies, but they could only be sounds that come from bathroom fixtures. So we had all these things come to the studio. It was crazy. Truck arrived, big bathtub, all those bits and bobs. Um, we got it into the studio and then we sat there and wondered, okay, what are we going to do next? Well, make noises. And that's what we did. So we ended up creating this music or rhythms, I should say, using these sounds. And then at the end of it, we said, well, let's sample it. Let's, how often are we going to get a toilet and a bathtub and all these other things in a studio, in a professional studio? Let's just sample this. So we did. We went through and sampled all these awesome sounds and we've got this instrument. So don't be uh, turned off like, oh, I'm playing a toilet or something like that. It's actually, uh, it doesn't sound like that. You would never really know. They just sound like interesting, fun, quirky sounds. So let's dive on in and go through some of the solo ones. Now, we're calling this latrine because it's a little bit more of a fancy word for toilet. We thought just calling it toilet sounded a bit, uh, you know, a bit of toilet humor there. But I think latrine sounds a bit more uh, posh. So here we are. Latrine, toilet. Let's have a listen. So lots of little interesting sounds. We would be hitting it with hands and sticks and other different ways of just getting just unique, you know, one hit textures. Obviously we, we're getting a lot of round robin with these things too. So it's quite uh, diverse in what you can actually achieve with these sounds. Here we've just got some random objects, random fixtures and other weird things. objects.
So little nice sounds there. We have a sink. Lots of ways we got sounds. The sinks were great actually. They just have a certain resonance with those things. When you give them a good whack, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, you could just do so much. We have a second sink actually. So let's have a listen. And a third sink. So those are the individual little instruments. They're really a lot of fun. And as you can imagine, if you're combining them with some of the other regions and adding that kind of extra little kind of fairy dust on top, it, it really does add something useful for sure. Here we are, we've just got one little uh, combination, just bridging together a number of these different sounds. As you can see, random object, sink, toilet, another sink. So let's have a wee listen. Bring these a little bit closer in the mix if you want to hear what that sounds like. And there we have it. We have oddities in a nutshell. So let's dive on to our next new world percussion instrument. Here we've got world percussion ensembles. This one truly is quite special. Uh, had the absolute privilege of um, bringing back my good friend Ian Watson plus a number of other talented percussionists to create some awesome ensembles. And, you know, recording solo drums are fantastic, and we love having that flexibility of building up our own ensembles. But there is a bit of magic when you get a few musicians into the one room and just having them all play together. You're getting that natural flamminess, a natural, there's a certain kind of thing which it's quite hard to reproduce otherwise. So I think we've got the best of both worlds here. You can kind of take a product like World Percussion Ensembles and then combine them with some of our solo instruments or solo percussion libraries and then you can really have a great degree of flexibility. So let's just dive in and have a listen to some of these sounds. So here we are, we've just got some solo instruments, uh, this one here, African Vocal Ensemble, No Grooves.
Yeah, there's this, that was really kind of a, a bonus thing we did at the end of the day. We thought, come on, let's, let's just grab some nice African shouts and uh, just have something interesting there. So we did that one. Now we'll just dive in and have a look at the, the main ensembles. So here we have the Durham Booker ensemble. Then individual hits. Yeah, that, they're just something pretty nice. Imagine combining those with some of the solo Durham Bookers from Middle East. It's definitely a lot of options. Uh, djembe Ensemble. So they're pretty handy. So you've got all the individual hits. So they are uh, definitely give you a lot of flexibility for sure, and just hearing that interesting balance of the different musicians all playing together, it really is unique. A Middle Eastern Duff Ensemble. A Dun Hai Ensemble. And Dun Lo Ensemble. Lion Symbol Ensemble. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And obviously we couldn't have just lion cymbals, we could have we needed to have our lion drum ensemble.
don't know, I just really love hearing these lion drums up close. Yeah, there's just something full and organic about those drums. The Mazha Ensemble. Orchestral Bass Drum Ensemble. This is really, I do find these orchestral bass drums are fantastic when you kind of use them and blend them in with some of the other sounds. It can just sound so massive. Palette drum. This was kind of a, a really tricky one to record because these are these little um, Chinese drums on a stick. If you remember seeing Karate Kid back in the day where they were doing the, you know, that scene, I think it was Karate Kid 2 possibly, they were doing the scene with the little pallet drums and they, they had these little strings and two balls attached and they would fling around as you would kind of move the stick. So we ended up trying to sample those. Generally, you, ma you mainly just do looped kind of articulations with these ones, but we did manage to get one single hit <laughs> type of technique out of it with multiple round robin, obviously. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a really tricky one to do, but it's just nice to have there and you can imagine adding those with the line drums or something like that. It's, it's pretty handy. So there's really only three different types. You've got really there was only kind of like two dynamics there. There was the kind of the the slower kind of turn, and then there was a really fast one. So it's, it, look, it's a fun wee one there to add for sure. Just another sound. Saba Ensemble, so this is back into our African drums. And with this one, just like when I was mentioning about Middle East, you could effectively use the Sabar Ensemble, then load up your um, Africa, Word Percussion Africa, and you've got all the individual solo subas there too, suba drums, which you can use. And yeah, a lot of flexibility for sure. A snare ensemble, so a bit more Western.
So some useful things there. We have a pseudo ensemble. And some solo hits, or the solo hits. Traditionally, the sudo isn't really meant to be like an epic drum. It's quite mellow in nature. So I think um, this is a pretty true representation of what a sudo ensemble would sound like and a Middle Eastern Tubble Ensemble. Some nice things there. A tom, high tom ensemble. So we've got rolls, individual hits. And here we have a low tom ensemble. and a medium size one. So the idea is that you have these different sizes, but once you stack them all together, you get an even bigger, more grand sound. So those are the individual instruments. Now let's have a little look at some combinations. And as like usual, you've got access to all the individual hits. And I'd always encourage you to make your own grooves because it's fun. So that was a grand percussion. That was a combination of orchestral bass drum, sudo, the toms, duns, and line drum and tubble. Just an interesting concoction.
The next one here is more of a Middle Eastern focused concoction. And this next one is more of an African flavored um, combination. Yeah, so, so you can see how you can just bring it all closer and it suddenly sounds even different, a bit more intimate. So it's pretty handy, pretty handy stuff. And here is a more line drum focused combination. That one there is definitely uh, takes you to China. It's great. And just to check, our lucky last one, which is a more European focused snare, tom, bass drum combo. A lot of individual hits there, very, very useful. Um, and yes, so that is World Percussion Ensembles. It really is a treasure trove of sounds in that one. It, it covers a lot of uh, regions of the world, and plus when you combine that with the solo drums, it's really a tremendous amount of possibilities there. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So here we have a very special instrument, a new one here, World Percussion Tuned. It's focusing, as the header says, on tuned percussion. 
Uh, as you notice, we don't have any grooves page because, well, it's tune percussion. We're not really here to do grooves with these ones. It's just more about playable, beautiful instruments. So let's have a little look and just go through the sounds. So we'll start off with some solo instruments. As you can see here, just to show you, these ones here were, and this one was taken from World Percussion Africa. And these ones here were taken from Asia. And then the rest, like the Krotals, Glockenspiel, Handpan, Marimba, Gypsy Dulcimer, Steel Pans, Bass and Normal, and you know, Xylophone Vibes and Tudor Bells, they're all brand new, all brand new recorded instruments. So yeah, let's just have a listen and just play. And then we have another balafon. So pardon my playing. If it's a little bit sloppy. Let's move on. So a Krutal, brand new. So for a lot of the new tuned instruments where possible, we recorded live rolls. And in this case, we all did some bowed techniques, which were just nice and beautiful. Glockenspiel. A hand pan. So there's a few different techniques we grabbed here. And this one here is just some kind of random, random hits there, which really are not really tuned, but it's a, it's a fun wee instrument, this one for sure. The marimba. So this is a, from memory, this one's a softer mallet.
actually, I may be wrong. I think that might be the softer mallet. Yes, that's the harder mallet. The other one was a softer mallet. And we also have um, some rolls. So we have rolls for both mallets. Mimbera. Gypsy dulcimer. This is kind of like the uh, the granny pianos of dulcimers. It's pretty pretty lovely. some little tremolos there. The steel pan base, so we sampled a big steel pan and then a kind of a normal size one, uh, which is great because when you combine them together you get a, a really big extended range. <laughs> size one. Gamelan. Mute techniques. So that was the Bonang. The Jenglong. Mute technique. And the Saron. Run two. And tubular bells. Muted ones, muted technique, 
and the lovely vibraphone. Some nice rolls. We also recorded the rolls with the vibrato set on. And we have some bowed, a bowed articulation. That is nice. And xylophone. So we have a, uh, a sort of a harder mallet versus a softer mallet. And we've also got the uh, rolls to go along with that. So those are the individual ones. Now, I've made some little concoctions of blends of different tuned instruments. This is where the fun begins. So let's just have a wee play. So here it's just got balafon, two balafons playing, marimba, xylophone. It's just a nice earthy woody sort of sound. So this one here, Gamelan in the Mist, it's got pretty much all the Gamelan playing together. <laughs> Gentle rain. Ice lake. Serenade. Little Fox.
So if you hit a bit louder, you can sometimes get different techniques coming in, depending on how these combinations have been set up. Majestic Beauty. Metallic Wonder. Muted Palette. Mysterious Interlude. Nile Symphony. Tropical Divergence. Whispering Memories. Winter Chimes. Wood and Mallets. And that is our world percussion tune. So there really is quite a nice variety. You can blend different tuned instruments together and come up with uh, lovely little concoctions. We just have two smaller instruments to look at. So we'll quickly dive into those, have a little look, and we are nearing the end of this extra, extra long video. So thank you for sticking around if you have stuck around. And yeah, let's check it out. So our last two little instruments 
um, is the Indonesian Anklang, and then we have a, a brand new Mbera, African Mbera. The Anklang is just one instrument that we sampled. It was actually took us a long time to do this. It was pretty, uh, pretty involving, but it's, it's a nice, it's a lovely, iconic Indonesian instrument. So look, let's just have a listen and go through. It's simple, one instrument with a bunch of articulation. So let's check them out. So we managed to, uh, we got an amazing collection there and we were able to get a, a really, really full range of notes. So the, the first technique was a traditional shake and the next one is a tap, so it's a bit sharper. And here we have a flam. And then we have a, a roll, a slow roll. And then a fast roll. And lastly, we have a random roll, which is just kind of going from slow to fast. It was just a bit kind of, uh, uh, just a bit of a fun, different articulation there. So as you can imagine, because they're all a little bit different and you start stacking notes, you can really come up with something pretty, pretty fun. Um, like, so I should say that the uh, the way this instrument and the Mimbera are set up is a little bit different to the main world percussion libraries. We don't have a builder menu because it's just one instrument. Here we've got advanced, which is pretty much the same. You've got like a scale lock system where you can choose different scales and then it will only show the notes within that scale so you can just stick within C or D sharp and then you'd have major, natural minor, you can just change those, it's pretty handy. Articulations, you can unload different articulations or assign them to different key switches there and if you want to do go ahead and do any form of micro tuning you have access to every single note of the instrument and then you can tune them subtly if you like. So that is our little unclung. Oh, actually, and just to show you here, you've got your traditional mixer if you prefer to work with that instead of the VR stage. Let's have a look at the uh, last little instrument, the Mimbera. So here we have the African Mimbera. I'll, uh, as I said earlier on in the video, this Mimbera is different to the original Mimbera that came with Africa. This is a brand new one, so it's different. And why is it different? Because it's uh, it has these really cool bottle caps on there and when you start playing it, they go wild and it's just really, uh, it's just a really f different fun flavor. So look, let me just get in there and have a play. You can have a listen. We sampled a bunch of different techniques. It's fun. See how wild that is, it's, it's cool. Uh, and then we sampled some mute techniques with buzz. It's 
good. You can kind of create a bit more of a rhythmic performance with those ones. And what is definitely useful is some kind of, well, we're calling them rolls, but they're just sort of random pluckings. magical, eh? And here we decided to mute those bottle caps and get a clean sound because it did sound beautiful. And some mute ones without the buzz. those random rolls. And lastly, we grab some body hits of tapping different parts of the instrument. such a beautiful instrument. I, this was, I think this was definitely a highlight recording the Mimbera. It, it's just got some really, really lovely personality there. So now that's the end of our world percussion journey. So thank you very much for sticking with me. It was definitely a long one. You may wonder, what if I own any of the older world percussion 2.0 versions? Well, we're here to look after you. My very good friends at Native Instruments have been very kind and offered free upgrades, or they're giving me serials to pass on to my lovely users out there to upgrade to the latest version of their relevant product. So what that means is, let's say you own World Percussion 2.0 Core, which is the full one that comprised of five regions of the world, Africa, Asia, Europe, Middle East, and South America. That means if you own that, you will get a free upgrade to those five regions. So you'll get the new Africa, the new Asia, new Europe, new Middle East, and the new South America. Now let's say you bought um, just Africa by itself, then you'll get a free upgrade to the new Africa. And the great thing is it's using the free contact player. So it's all up, you know, all kind of in line. So whatever you own, now if you have Tyco, you get a free upgrade to Tyco, the new version, which is great. I really want to help you guys out too, and I, I, like, I really appreciate all the massive support we've had over the years, so I'd like to pass on the love, as they say. Um, so yeah, look, and then obviously we've got new libraries. Um, there will be uh, a promo discount at the beginning, so definitely jump on that if you want a deal. But other than that, I thank you all very, very much for the great support and we're truly proud of this update. I think it really brings a new lease on life to the sounds of world percussion. So I hope you enjoy and thanks again. Take care.